Welcome to Teachers College in our 125th year. And a special welcome to the co-chair of our Board of Trustees, Jack Hyland, our vice chair of our board, Lori Tish, who, from whom we will hear in a few minutes. Uh, to Mayor Cory Booker, Manhattan Borough President Scott Stringer. Cory Booker is also a TC trustee. City Council Chair Christine Quinn, New York State Assembly Member Richard Gottfried, and um, our guests from the USDA, Kevin Concanon, and everyone else who's joining us this morning. Happy Valentine's Day. <laughs> so here's to all the couples. Especially the pairing we celebrate today, or I should say pairings. One pairing is the study of nutrition education and its applications to policy. The Lori M. Tisch Center for Food Education and Policy here at Teachers College will enable groundbreaking work that builds on TC's history in the two areas. First of all, nutrition education, we founded the field after all. And second, our demonstrated track record of providing evidence relevant to policy. Those of you who are close to Teachers College and our celebration of our 125th year, our legacy of firsts, knows how many firsts, how many fields were established here. There's so many to recount. Educational psychology, urban education, gifted education, conflict resolution, arts education, international and comparative education, nursing education, and special education all started here. The college's first dean, James Earl Russell, envisioned, in his words, training which would enable the student to see the relationships existing everywhere in various fields of knowledge, even the unity of all knowledge. And let's not forget that TC is the birthplace of the first scholarly textbook, the first yellow school bus, and the song, Happy Birthday. <laughs> but one of the most important firsts, and the one that provides the foundation for what we're launching today, is our program in nutrition education. In 1909, 104 years ago, TC began building the road that leads us to today. Well, the very idea of nutrition, the study of how food contributes to health and growth, was quite young. Indeed, the idea of vitamins had not even been invented, much less the name. Teachers College founded the world's first program in nutrition education. In the years since, the program has been a leader in conducting high-quality research into the role of food and diet in people's lives as well as educating future leaders in the fields of clinical nutrition, school nutrition, and others. Graduates have gone on to lead public health agencies, community organizations, and academic departments everywhere that have followed in TC's footsteps in creating nutrition education programs. As for the second legacy relevant to today, making sure that policy is informed by evidence, the best evidence, that's something that no one does better than Teachers College. TC has long been an important center for education policy work in this nation. In fact, I was one of the first education policy PhDs in this country, right here at TC, not 125 years ago. <laughs> but in the 70s where Donna Shalala was my advisor. Talk about linking health and education. Last year we added a new department, Education Policy and Social Analysis, or EPSA, which brought together faculty from across all areas of the college who are interested in working on issues related to policy, from early childhood to K-12 to community colleges to post-secondary education. We're joining all those fields in our new uh, EPSA department. So a great pairing of nutrition education and policy in um, this celebration today and the conference today and in the future of Teachers College. Another pairing, there's no one we would rather partner with in this work than one of TC's biggest supporters and one of my closest advisors, Lori Tisch. Lori's commitment to New York City from healthy food to education, from civic service to the arts and beyond, is clearly inspired by a vision of a fair, just, and vibrant city. And we at TC are honored that she has made us a key partner in her healthy food and community change initiative. 
and we're enormously grateful for her inspiring gift to establish the Lori M. Tisch Center for Food, Education, and Policy here at Teachers College. We're confident that her gift will galvanize our efforts to make Teachers College a model for preparing top flight nutrition professionals and for leveraging groundbreaking nutrition research into more effective food policies. Through better access to and education about food, the Lori M. Tisch Center also will help to transform the communities that TC and the Illumination Fund serve. It's now my pleasure to welcome Lori to this stage, a stage that I hope she sees as a second home given all she has done for Teachers College. I know she needs no introduction, but I do want to call attention to her philanthropy, which stems from her family's legacy of giving in New York City, from years of experience of serving on boards, building institutions, and developing partnerships, and from an engaged civic life. She is past chair of the Children's Museum of Manhattan and the Center for Arts Education, and vice chair of the Board of Trustees at both Lincoln Center for the Performing Arts and, of course, here at TC. She also serves on the boards of the Whitney Museum of American Art, the Aspen Institute, and the New York Football Giants. In 2012, <laughs> yay, go blue. In 2012, Lori received the Public Health Association of New York City Special Merit in Public Health Award, and she was honored in 2011 by Generation On for her work in, on behalf of youth and service. Welcome, Lori, and thank you for all you've done and are continuing to do for TC, for New York City, and for countless others who benefit from your generosity and wisdom. Thank you, Susan. Happy Valentine's Day to all, and as always, go Giants. <laughs> so <laughs> thank you um, to Susan and her wonderful staff at Teachers College who helped organize today's really spectacular event. On behalf of myself and my truly gifted staff at the Laurie M. Tisch Illumination Fund, I'm delighted to welcome you all here to the inaugural conference of the Laurie M. Tisch Center for Food, Education, and Policy. I've served as a board member at Teachers College, not for 125 years, but for more than 20 years, and I'm so proud to have supported projects that have achieved real and lasting impact. The annual distinguished lecture, Tisch Lecture, which supports a visiting lecture a speaker speaking about a topic considered important to the future of education in the broadest sense has become a true hallmark, a true educational hallmark event in New York. This past year's lecturer, Helen Clark, is the chair of the United Nations Development Group and former Prime Minister of New Zealand, and she addressed the role of education in international development. And in 2009, the Illumination Fund supported the expansion of the college's schools and community partnerships. The program serves 12 public schools in Harlem and has led to the creation of a truly groundbreaking new public elementary school, the Teachers College Community School. And congratulations to Susan and all who made that possible. So today represents a beginning, a new chapter in TC's nutrition program, which will provide research evidence-based programs, policy, and training for the next generation of nutritional professionals. And it also serves as the launch of the Illumination Fund's Healthy Food and Community Change Initiative, a major series of grants that vastly expands our commitment to healthy food and healthy choices. Our Healthy Food and Community Change Initiative is really at the heart of the, re of the reasons I started the foundation. In 2007, I set out to establish a New York-based foundation focused to improve access and opportunity for all New Yorkers. Now, I know that's a very broad mission, as we always say, whoever starts a foundation to limit access and opportunity. <laughs> but, but for the Illumination Fund, it's about finding strategies that help to level the playing field for New Yorkers in so many different areas, areas such as access to healthy food, or the arts, or education, or economic opportunity. We all know there are vast disparities in diet-related diseases across neighborhoods, and everyone in this room is all too familiar with the statistics. Communities plagued by high rates of poverty, poor education, and unemployment are very often the same neighborhoods where these diseases run rampant. 
That's why when I started the fund, our first major grant was to support the launch of the Department of Health's New York City Green Card Initiative. This was an innovative strategy that uses mobile vending as a way to increase the availability of fresh fruits and vegetables in neighborhoods where consumption is low and health conditions are the most severe. The New York City Green Card Initiative was an experimental strategy. It used small-scale entrepreneurship as a means to improve access to healthy foods, and it was a most creative, innovative public, uh, creative and innovative public-private partnership. I'm so enormously proud of the results. There are now about 500 green cards in these neighborhoods. This translates to 500 new points of access and approximately 900 new jobs have been created. Today, vendors on the streets of New York City provide health households with better access to healthier food choices. And the green card vendors have become true community assets and are partnering with local organizations to improve their neighborhoods. But all of this couldn't be possible without the support and enthusiasm of our partners, many of whom are in the room this morning. And I would like to take just a second to ask all of those who we've worked with at the Illumination Fund to stand because you have made our work so possible and have done such a great job. And really, thanks to all of you. But our work has only just begun. We're still learning from the Green Card Initiative and set our sights on ways to build on its success. Last year, we underwrote a film, The Apple Pushers, that chronicled the Green Card Initiative and vendors who are using it as an opportunity to gain a foothold in the economy. In some cities, we held panel discussions about access to healthy food, and often an audience member would say something like, ah, the Green Card Initiative, what a great solution. But unfortunately, green cards are a strategy, not a solution. And there are many, many strategies that have to work in concert, which again is why we're all here today. With the Healthy Food and Community Change Initiative, the Illumination Fund is greatly increasing our commitment to healthy food initiatives across the city. So today, I'm plazed, so pleased to announce our next commitment, $15 million. Did I read that right? <laughs> <laughs> it says $15 million. No, no, $15 million over the next five years to support new and expanded initiatives. These initiatives will focus on two strategies. Number one, deep neighborhood-based initiatives that take a holistic approach to community change. And two, public-private partnerships, forging collaborations across sectors so that grants and policy can align and have an even broader impact. But of course, when it comes to problems concerning healthy food, we all know there's not a single cause. Access is a big factor, but so is knowledge, behavior, income, affordability, the prevalence of unhealthy options, advertising, community environment, genetics, biology, and a whole host of other factors. Unfortunately, you can't just wave a magic wand. But the good news is there is increasing evidence base for a number of, strateg of strategies. Progress is definitely being made. And I commend the New York City Health Department and their initiatives in, for the first time in a long time, the obesity, the childhood obesity rates are down in New York. So thanks again and congratulations. <laughs> And again, many people in this room have, been, have had a great effort in working on that, so congratulations to all of you. It's imperative that we understand the issues and underlying factors and develop strategies that are based on the best knowledge. That is why we brought together this very distinguished panel of speakers today. Together, we will examine how community programs can truly drive change and translate evidence-based programs into public policy. The structure of this morning's event is designed to give us the opportunity to hear from program experts who develop and evaluate initiatives and elected officials who rely on that evidence when they are considering public policy and public investment. And I'm sure you'll agree that we brought together some of the best and brightest minds in that field. Actually, not some. 
the very best and brightest minds in that field. We also hear about some of new and we'll also hear about some of the new initiatives that the Illumination Fund will support. And to cap it off, we're extremely honored that the USDA Undersecretary Kevin Con Cannon will close the program. So stick around. We've got a really full plate. There's a lot to digest, and we promised a most fruitful and interesting morning. And now that wasn't in the script. Don't blame anyone but me for that. <laughs> and now I'd like to welcome Pam Koch, the new executive director of the Laurie M. Tisch Center for Food, Education, and Policy, who will give us some context and to introduce our moderator from NBC, Madeline Fernstrom, who will lead today's discussions. Thank you.